Hi everyone, so today I just wanted to share the technique I would use if you wanted to create game ready hair in ZBrush using fiber mesh. So the fiber mesh you probably think about when you think of fiber mesh is something that looks kind of like this where it's got uh, a lot of different hair strands and it's not at all game ready. So if I extract that, that's 400,000 polys, which is obviously not uh, suitable for a game engine. So I'm just going to share the way that I think you could do it in ZBrush. This is just one way. Uh, in my opinion, it's quite an easy way. And let's just get started. So this is a character I am working on based on this concept by Concept4 on ArtStation. And I'm going to be creating this sort of comb over do. I'm not going to be doing the full hair just because it'll take a long time and I want to do this in real time. So I'm just going to be giving an example. So to start off with fiber mesh, you want to be masking out the area that you will be fiber meshing. So obviously you do this holding control and just dragging to mask out an area. Uh, I'm going to be doing it pretty roughly, to be honest. Uh, this isn't going to be my final hair. I'm just, as I say, I'm just showing you the method. So, say it's like this, and he's going to be having this comb over type type thing he's got going on. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. It's just going to be a guide. So, we've got this area masked out, and what you want to do is you want to move down to the fiber mesh tab and click preview and it's going to create this uh, kind of wacky looking hairstyle that's that's okay we're going to be grooming it later which is okay so the main problem with this is that there are far too many strands obviously so we want to turn the max fibers way down something something kind of like this you know and then to turn them into cards because these fiber mesh strands are basically just planes uh, with curves in them so to turn them into cards you want to increase the coverage and these are all cards now all of these share the same uv points which is going to be useful as we see later so we've got something roughly like that i'm gonna just lower the length a little bit because we don't need that at this point you would go in and sort of adjust all all of these things. Uh, I'm not particularly going to, just as I say, it's just going to be a quick and dirty way of showing you exactly what to do. Um, so we've got something like this. So once you've got this, you're going to click accept and it's going to make a separate subtool. So this has 3000 polys, which for sort of a current gen game hairstyle, is pretty okay to be honest. So you want to be going to uh, to sort of sculpt this hair into the shape you want because obviously this isn't this isn't a, a good hairstyle at the moment. You want to be heading to these groom tools. So I like using groom hair short, groom hair long, those type things and you can just select them and sort of move everything into place like so. Okay, so let's say that I am happy with how this hair looks and I spent time on it, you know, and it looks the way I want. So to give it a texture so that you can see exactly what you're working with, it'll just be a preview, you know, you want to be going to the UV map tab, changing your UV map size. I would, for hair, uh, for shortish hair like this, I wouldn't recommend anything too big. I'm going to go with 256 something like that and then you want to be creating fiber UV so when you've made this fiber UV what this does is all of these cards are have the same UV points as I mentioned earlier so when you create this fiber UV it lays all of the UVs on top of each other so for anything within this fiber mesh that you're still making it's gonna have the they're all gonna share the same UV so you only have to put one texture on all of these uh, this is why uh, to sort of vary your textures up a bit, you, you wouldn't want to go in with this many for each texture. 
you're going to want to do lots of various passes and add different textures and everything so it just looks a lot a lot more varied and a lot more natural. Uh, once you have this, uh, I did already do this so I'll just show you. This is, uh, is that how it came? Uh, this is the alpha map I made in Photoshop. I just took a, a hair texture off Google, applied a hair type mask to it. You want to make sure that the background in, photo in Photoshop is transparent. So you export it as a PNG and the background will be transparent. Uh, if yours imports upside down, what you can do is if you import it in, in here, if you go to texture, import, uh, I think this is one something like that. Yeah, if you click on there and then you go to texture, select it here. Where is it? You can select it here and then you can just rotate the card so that it's facing the right way up. So I want mine facing that way. And then when you go to texture map, you can just import it in here again and it will update. And so to get rid of this blackness, this black is just from the PNG where it's transparent. You just want to turn transparent up and it'll look like that. So when I preview that, um, just let it go, it should just be transparent as if you have an alpha map over it. So in Photoshop, you'll be making a transparent hair image so it looks looks roughly like that. Uh, it will look different in game to in Zebra so you you do want to bear that in mind. So say we're happy with that and because you've made these UVs uh, in here when you export this uh, make a new folder. So when you export this, say as um, fiber hair, it will retain the UVs. So let's import that OBJ in here. And as you can see, it's made this square UV sheet. And that's basically it. You would just texture this as you wanted. If you had multiple different um, cards as I said you want to be making lots of different layers and different textures you could select this it will take a long time uh, because you know there's 3,000 different objects in here you can select this and resize it and when you import import different uh, your different textures you'll import them in here and make your nice UV sheet as you would uh, this should still have retained, yeah, it roughly retains the texture, it doesn't retain the transparency because Maya needs a transparency map. But that's basically it, you know. Um, obviously you would probably want to, you would definitely want to retexture this, but that's pretty much how I would go about it. Uh, it was a pretty short sort of rubbish video. I hope I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask, and thank you very much for watching. Cheers.